kid, I remember often feeling overwhelmed by injustice, particularly when it came to nature. I saw trees cut down. They would tear me apart. I had my favorite spot by the beach vanish, only to be replaced by a luxury hotel. It made me furious. The river in my neighborhood, where we spent hours playing as kids, gradually dried out, and I just couldn't quite get my head around it. Now, as an adult, I see even more abuse of my natural environment. The difference, though, today is that I've managed to switch my fears to confidence and my anger to creativity. And I was able to do that by planting my own garden. My name is Sofia Mazzi, and this is my story. I am a chemist. Oddly enough, I am also an artist. I've worked as a quality control analyst, a graphic designer, an art teacher, a chemistry tutor, but most of the time I was working day in, day out, grasping anything that came my way, but I was ending each month with just enough to cover basic food needs, utilities, and transportation costs. <laughs> to top it all, the financial crisis, the banking collapse here in Cyprus, left no one untouched, including me. Job opportunities were becoming scarce, and uh, people could not afford to pay for my services anymore. There I was, this young professional with all these skills and expertise, but without a single clue. How was I going to survive? As if all this wasn't enough, I began to feel disappointed with things I observed happening around the world. The poverty, the greed, the excess, the waste, it all began to overwhelm me. I felt consumed by facts like, we have achieved the highest level of food abundance in the entire history of humanity. Today, we produce enough calories in food to feed the entire world twice, while we possess the means to produce, pack, ship food all across the world, all throughout the year. Yet, despite the abundance, diseases thrive due to poor diet and nutrient deficiencies. Or the fact that every single day on this tiny island, we throw away eight tons of fresh fruit and vegetables because we want to assure better selling prices for them in the market. It also bothered me that much of medical practice today depends on patented biomedicine and focuses only on symptom alleviation, which results to more and more people chronically hooked to synthetic drugs, resulting to more and more diseases due to their side effects. I had enough. I did not want to be part of the problem anymore. I decided that from then on, my life would be part of the solution. It was game over for me. I needed a redesign, a new life. So I began to look around, and I began to search for a way to survive, a way that would have the least possible impact on my surroundings. Uh, I wondered. How did self-sufficiency look like? Was it even possible? Um, I searched, I searched, and everywhere I read, the word permaculture showed up. What I understood was that through this permaculture thing, I would be able to create projects, projects that would value and regenerate resources, precious resources like food, soil, water. And I would be able to design my garden, my community, my life. I was hooked. I had to get my hands on this. So very soon, I was enrolled in a 10-day permaculture course, and I found myself waking up in Seljana's seductive scenery. I don't know if it was the mystical forest and the gushing waters of the Peloponnese Mountains, or the beautiful facilities, and the strong community spirit being built up on Regreen Center, but I was blown away. I was filled with hope that change was possible. For a few days only, I was a part of a community where self-sufficiency was the aim, and regeneration and the healing of the land and the people was a priority. I witnessed it happen, 
and I had to bring it back home. Now, what I had to start with was a small piece of land that my dad inherited from his mom. Returning back home, I get into the car, 30 minutes later, there I am. This warm summer dawn, walking around the land barefoot, listening to the birds and crickets sing, enjoying the calming sound of dancing pine needles. I was fascinated. I wanted to be independent, right? I wanted to be able to produce my own food. This, this was it. This was my chance for a new life, a new beginning. And then it struck me. Now what? My head flooded with questions. Millions of questions we learned at the course. Like, how much rain do I get within a year? Do I have a problem with frost or flooding during the winter? What trees should I plant? How do you even plant a tree? At that point, I couldn't quite tell the difference between a tomato and a pumpkin plant, let alone the answers to all that. So I took a deep breath, and I said to myself, I will start small. And so I decided to head up there once a week and work on creating my first vegetable garden. And here is where the lessons I want to share with you begins. My short experience with gardening quickly showed me that, number one, I can fill my stomach and pantry with a little bit of soil, water, and sunshine. My weekly gardening agenda included all sorts of things, like seed sowing, transplanting veggies, mulching veggie beds, turning compost, caring for the trees. Land work was endless, but so was the fun. There was a great deal of satisfaction having almost all the ingredients in my, of my meals come from this small patch of a garden. I was even soon producing more than I could fit in my plate, so I started preserving food. I started storing food in my freezer, drying veggies in the sun, making sauces, chutneys, jams. I adored every single part of this, its glories as well as its challenges. There was the time I spent months growing seedlings from seeds, and then weeks preparing the vegetable beds, and days transplanting them, only to have everything demolished in an hour's hailstorm. Four months of prep work, and my food supply for the next five months vanishing before my eyes within minutes. I cried for days. <laughs> but then I realized this was all part of it. In my current life, I chose to be part of nature, and I had to play by her rules. Sometimes the agony of supporting my choice of life seems impossible to handle. Yet, support somehow always shows up. Now picture this. There I am, planting hundreds of lettuces at the same time, proudly thinking, I'm assuring my food supply for the next couple of months. And then I realize it all has to be harvested at the same time. And there's only so much lettuce you can eat. But my friends were like, well, we'd love to buy some from you. So my surplus problem turns into a solution. Now, the chemist inside, right? That chemist was fascinated playing with the soil. But that chemist was particularly excited when I realized that beyond food, and here comes number two. I can grow health in my garden. I learned that almost half of the plants that grow in Cyprus have registered pharmaceutical properties. So I studied that. The more I studied, the more I was able to replace synthetic drugs with homemade remedies. Migraines, menstrual pains, flu, allergy symptoms, mosquito bites. With every opportunity, I was fascinated to use plants I had harvested from my own garden, or I found growing out in the wild. Now, my work with herbs brought me closely to my third conclusion. I can actually clean my house with things I can eat? Genius. 
bathrooms, floors, kitchen counters, clothes. I was quickly replacing expensive chemical cleaners with innocent mixes of edible ingredients. I was mixing soda with vinegar to unclog my sewage pipes, and ground coffee to take off smells from food containers, citrus infusions from the lemon tree right outside my door to sterilize my kitchen counters. What's more, I was able to make my own soap, deodorant, cosmetics in the same pot. I would eat out of a few seconds later. Now, this whole shift towards natural solutions quickly made me realize, number four, that I can stay fit and healthy and discover the world on my own two feet, and all for free. Let me explain that a little bit better. There was no longer money nor time for expensive gym memberships. I wanted to be able to work out on my own and be outdoors as much as possible. So naturally, my bicycle became my preferred vehicle. And I cruised around on it pretty much everywhere I went. On two wheels, I discovered the calm sunrises of Pizillas mountain range and how mornings look like in nearby villages. And that sweet afternoon breeze while gushing through Pendadactylo's dense pine forest. Between cycling around Cyprus, open water swimming, trail running, possibilities for exploration were endless. Trail running, long trail running, got me to some of the most majestic landscapes I've ever experienced in my life. I visited the same hiking trails time and time again, and I was fascinated to observe how were patterns changing, our seasons were changing. I learned how to forage for wild edibles and where and when medicinal plants are growing. Now, this whole journey began in an attempt to achieve food, health, overall well-being. But it made absolutely no sense if I couldn't share all this with more people. And this leads me to my final, and in a way, most rewarding aspect of my journey. That, number five, I am not on my own. It didn't take long to realize that there were others, many, many others. And we quickly connected. We were sharing knowledge, we were sharing our dreams, our hopes, our fears for the future. We grew stronger together. Together, we organized events, lectures, presentations, workshops, seminars, and we were addressing contemporary social and environmental problems, and we were proposing solutions for them. Together, we created Cyprus Seed Savers, an heirloom seed saving group with the aim to empower and to connect the gardener, the farmer. What we do is that we actually collect seeds, traditional varieties of seeds, and then we multiply them, and we then share them with people. Because we realize that food sovereignty and true independence derives from the smallest and most powerful precursor of life, a seed. So we began building our own seed bank, a dome made out of sandbags and soil. And all these projects helped bring permaculture and ethical food growing in schools. And we worked with schools in creating resilient vegetable and herb gardens and collaborated with kids on learning basic self-sufficiency tools. Now, through this journey, meeting so many passionate people who were ready to commit and sustain a life through respect and collaboration with nature, we were inspired to create the Cyprus Eco Festival, an annual festival, a celebration of life, actually, with music, food, talks, workshops, where, when, and local products, where the producer meets directly with the customer and they share their knowledge on their handcrafted chemical-free products. Now, looking back, I see that it all started as a panic reaction to financial crisis. Is this an attempt to escape the norm? Am I a hippie, dreaming of change and my planet's well-being? Am I a rebel, resisting the system? 
I don't know. And honestly, I don't think it matters. What I do know, though, is that like seeds, so we humans hold tremendous amount of power inside. I now know that each choice we make, from the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the way we transport ourselves to work every single day, each choice has an impact on how the world forms around us. I now understand the power of community. Nothing I have achieved this past four years would have been possible without the support of my community. My family, my friends, sometimes people I just met. Today, I walk on the path of natural living with commitment. Understanding every day how to take as little as I can from my environment and how to give back as much as I can. My vision is ever more clear. Focus on education and awareness of the power each of us possesses to create and sustain a thriving future for ourselves and for our home, our planet. Because at the end, we will protect only what we love. And we love only what we understand. And we understand only what we're taught. So let's decide what is worth sharing, what is worth teaching, and let's take a step forward together. <laughs>